Hello everyone, it's me, Sanjay Vasu, back again for another video. This time I'll be doing it on Cambridge Lower Secondary Checkpoint for Science Paper 1, April 2023. I'll be doing questions 7 to 12 in this paper. Let's start. Question 7. Our man has two sounds A and B. Look at the waveforms for these two sounds. Waveform A and B are given. Give one similarity and one difference between waveform A and waveform B. We can see that waveform A and B both have the same amplitude because the displacement or maximum displacement from the starting point is the same in both directions. So they have the same amplitude. And the difference is going to be that waveform B has a higher frequency than waveform A. As we can see that there's more waves per unit time or per second. So in this case, there's one wave every four seconds, but then for waveform A, it's one waveform every eight seconds, which is longer, of course. Therefore, the difference is that they have different frequencies. Waveform B has higher frequency. That's our answer. Let's go to question eight. When asteroids collide with the Earth, they make craters. Chen uses the model to investigate the effect of asteroid collisions with the Earth. In his investigation, Chen drops a rock into the container of soil, measures the size of the hole in the soil made by rock. A. Complete the sentences about Chen's model. In the model, the rock represents dash. Of course, the rock represents the asteroid. Asteroids are, after all, rocks. The soil, of course, represents the Earth, or the Earth's soil. And the hole represents the crater. That's our answer. B. Write down one strength and one limitation of this model of asteroid collisions with the Earth. Well, the strengths of this model are that it's very good for experiments. You can change one of the variables, for example, the size of the rock. And you can investigate how it affects the size of the crater. So we can say that different investigations related to the size of the crater or the hole at least can be made. The limitation is of course that a rock which we drop from my hand is going to have a speed of maybe a few meters per second, maybe even less. But then an asteroid colliding with Earth from the atmosphere, for from outside the atmosphere actually, in the asteroid belt for example, from there if an asteroid comes and collides with the Earth, it's going to have unimaginable speeds compared to those of the rock which we drop from our hand. So we cannot attain the actual speed at which real asteroids collide with the Earth. That's our answer. Let's go to question 9. Mysomatosis is a disease that kills rabbits. A. Describe the effect of mysomatosis on the size of a rabbit population. Obviously, if a disease kills rabbits, that means if this disease is present, the rabbit population decreases. That's our answer. B. Foxes hunt rabbits for food. The graph shows the population of foxes and the population of rabbits. So the population and time are given. The population changes as time goes on. Take the box that shows the population of rabbits. Give two reasons for the answer. Well, the answer is that line A is the rabbits. Give two reasons. The first reason is that a rabbit's population is going to be higher than foxes on average. Of course, there are a few periods like this where it's lower, but then on average, the rabbits are usually higher. As you can see, there's huge period here, another one here, and then there's one over here. Compared to the time when it's smaller, population for rabbits, this is much larger. So, rabbits usually have 
higher population than foxes. Of course, if the fox's population was higher, then the foxes would not all be able to get their prey, which means that they will starve to death and the fox's population will decrease automatically, also increasing the rabbit's population. That's why there's some wavy lines here. So as the fox's population increase and the rabbit populations are low, the foxes will starve to death and then it'll go down again while the rabbits will not be hunted as much so they will go up again and this process continues and what i just said can be written as a second point the second point can be that when population of rabbits goes down the fox's population goes up and vice versa that's our answer let's go to question 10 blessy makes some magnesium sulfate she adds an excess of magnesium to some dilute sulfuric acid until the reaction stops unreacted magnesium is left at the bottom of the solution a describe how blessy separates the magnesium sulfate solution from the unreacted magnesium of course she simply filters it or we can write filtration B. Blessy wants to make solid magnesium sulfate from the magnesium sulfate solution. Describe how she makes solid magnesium sulfate. Well, of course, there is the process of crystallization. So you can write evaporation of the water which is formed and dissolved magnesium sulfate and then leave solid magnesium sulfate to cool that's our answer c blessy now wants to make zinc chloride by dining with the metal and acid she used to make zinc chloride of course since this is zinc chloride zinc the metal is going to be zinc and the acid since this is a chloride we of course need hydrochloric acid since this is the main acid, which contains chlorine in it. The reaction will form zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. That's our answer. Question 11. The circuit diagram shows the circuit Priya makes using switches and identical lamps. A. Priya connects a meter to measure the current at position M in the circuit. Draw the correct symbol for the meter she uses to measure the current. Current is measured in amps or a unit A. And amps are measured using ammeter. So we can write down that this is an ammeter and the symbol is of course going to be a circle with an A on it. And of course don't forget the wires which pass through it. So that's our answer. B. Priya opens and closes different switches. Complete the table by writing if the switches are open or closed and the lamps are on or off. So we have a few switches and lamps labeled here. So if switch R is closed, but then switch S and switch T are open, that means current will flow through here. And then it'll split into two paths. So this path will not flow because switch S is open. And this path will also not flow because switch T is open. So none of these light bulbs will connect and none of them will be on. All the lamps will be off. Now, if switch R is open and the other two are closed, well, of course, if switch R is open, the current can't even travel past this. So, of course, all three light bulbs are going to be off. So, off and off. Now, for the third one, we know what are the status of the lamps. Lamp J is on, L is on, and K is off. So, of course, if at least one of the lamps is on, switch R has to be closed. Otherwise, none of them will be on. And now, what about switch S and T? Well, the current goes through J and then splits into two parts. So, K, the lamp we know, is off. And therefore, switch S has to be open. Only then, K will be off and it won't be brightened. But then, switch T has to be closed since lamp L is on. So, this is closed and this is open. 
C. Describe how Priya connects the voltmeter to measure the voltage across lamp J. Well, even though an ammeter may be connected in series with the circuit parts, the voltmeter must be connected in parallel. to lamp J. That's our answer. Now let's go to question 12. Pierre investigates the reaction between calcium carbonate and dilute hydrochloric acid. The reaction gives off carbon dioxide gas. Look at the equipment he uses. 100 centimeters cubed dilute hydrochloric acid is in this conical flask and 20 grams of calcium carbonate as well. Now a glass well plug is inserted A by the name of equipment X. Of course, this is a weighing scale or weighing balance since it measures the mass of any item placed on it. Now for part B. Pierre measured the loss in mass every minute for 4 minutes. Here are his results. At the start, the loss in mass is 0.00 grams, 1.5 grams. After 4 minutes, 3 minutes is a loss of 1.2 grams. After 1 minute, it's 0.8 grams. After 2 minutes, it's 1.1 gram. Complete his results table. So we only have one heading written, which is loss in mass in grams. We need the other heading. Which are we comparing this to? We're comparing it to time. Time is what is progressing as the reaction progresses. So time since reaction start in seconds. Now we write the five values which are written here. So at the start, which is zero seconds, the loss in mass is 0, 0.0 grams. Now 1.5 grams is after four minutes, but we don't write this first. We have to write in chronological order. The spelling is this, chronological order, which means in order of time. So we write one minute first, and we have two minutes, three minutes, and four minutes. So after one minute, the loss in mass is 0, 0.8 grams. After 2 minutes, it's 1.1 grams, 3 minutes, 1.2 grams, and 4 minutes, 1.5 grams. Sorry, this is in minutes, not in seconds. And this will be our answer. With that, I come to the end of the video. Please like this video, subscribe to our channel, share this video with your friends and family, and comment on how you think this video was. With that, it's me, Sanjay Vasu, signing out. Thank you. Bye.